picking up where we left off last time. I just wanted to quickly show this is about where Pico was. It can do you know cursor movements and it can type, but it doesn't save anything and it's not persisted in any way. We don't have home, we don't have page down, so it's still a bit rough. Right out of the gate, I wanted to go fix a bug I noticed in the insert slice. I was taking the entire array and we need to take only for the gap. So if you had something in the right string, you shouldn't theoretically have that issue. In order for us to efficiently load a file without having to first clone it to an array and then cloning it again, we're going to, uh, inside the text buffer, have kind of a halfway point where I'm grabbing the operating system interface and I'm grabbing the gap buffer interface, but the terminal has no idea what's going on outside. We, again, we don't want to leak our abstractions. We want to pass the operating system handle in, and my thought was that way at least the terminal can guarantee that it has a good file handle that's coming into the terminal. And once we're inside there, we can go ahead and grab the file size, and this is just to make sure that the gap buffer is properly sized when we go ahead and insert a file. Next, we need to check that the gap, the gap size is big enough to handle the incoming file. We'll go ahead and shift the gap to where the cursor is. You know, in theory, this is probably only going to be used at position zero, but you could, again, concatenate. So we want to guarantee that the gap is at the correct cursor position. Once we have the cursor position correctly, we can go ahead and take a slice, take, basically take that slice of the gap and pass it into the operating system read command, and that will fill the gap for us. However, because we did that manually bypassing the gap buffers insert procedures, we need to go ahead and manually update the uh, gap pointers. One important thing we need to do is make sure to calculate the lines. And this is what tells the terminal and how it actually goes to render on the screen. After that, we've got the flush to file, and this is just the opposite. We've got to write this thing back out to the file. And so again, we want to take in the handle and we'll, we're going to take it to the start of the file. And then once we're at the start of the file, we can grab the strings out of the gap buffer and just write each of the strings directly into the file. In the design right now, we're just truncating the file. So we're guaranteeing that it's always empty. So writing these in, you know, there's, there's not gonna be an issue there. We might could do buffer or file cursors to write like partial files, but definitely not for uh, what we're trying to do in, in this project here. Right here, I just had another small pickup I noticed where I was not subtracting off the length of the left string. So we're just cleaning that up and then we'll move on. We had a to-do left over from last time where I had the gap buffer being initialized from in the main terminal. And so I'm just real quick going and creating a simple wrapper here. I don't think I showed it in the code, but I did put a max on the make gap buffer. And that way you could never create a gap buffer with zero length. Uh, I think I probably could end up with a weird failure there if you did. When I was writing move cursor by lines, I thought I could just use it for the page up, page downs. But then I realized that in a, in a render cursor by line, you're preferentially moving the offset on the screen and or sorry, the cursor offset. And when you're moving by pages, you want to move like the page offset. And so if I'm on say row one and I want to page down, I want to stay on row one if I can. I only want to move the cursor if I'm out of rows or out of pages. And they, they just fundamentally work differently. And so I need to go and implement this one independently so we can go do that. And the, the way to do it is, you know, you move by basically we're saying how many pages am I going to jump, right? If I want to move one, one page or say 10. And from there, I'm going to say, maybe I want to move whatever that is, 29 lines or something. I am unable to necessarily go that far if I'm, I'm at one of the borders. And so I go ahead and clamp it here where I'm making sure that I can't actually go below, you know, less than zero or more than the length of the buffer minus one screen, right? The, the page offset can only go uh, one screen from the top or one screen from the bottom. Uh, once I know that, I can grab the overstep. And in here, I just kind of quickly threw it together. I did an absolute, I think spending like literally probably a minute or two, I could sort out, you know, which way is positive, negative, and therefore you could get rid of it. 
once I have the uh, overstep, I can then add it to my render cursor. And even that may still be so much too much. And so again, I clamp it to make sure that I can't go below one, which is the one, one space, remember, and the height of the screen. And then once I have both of these, I can actually finally figure out what the absolute line I am in the file. And I can go look up the character offset. So the, normally we're not interested in where you are in the file because there's the uh, update render cursor function that does that. But in this case, I really I have to go, I have to go backwards from screen space back into file space. And this is kind of the probably most expedient way to do it. And then the, the last step here is to make sure that uh, the column cursor is moved to the right place. So if the row you go on to doesn't have that many characters, we can scoot to the left. Here was another small bug that I found where if you're looking for the visible cursors and you didn't have any lines, you weren't passing back the full length of the buffer. And I think there's a chance that that could happen. Now we've got all of our infrastructure in place. I'm gonna add a global save flag here. The uh, way we use the editors was say like Pico file name. The specific thing in this area that I ran across was making sure that on Linux your file permissions are set correctly. I had uh, initially only set it to OCreate and that doesn't really set the permissions right. And so we're gonna do OCreate and OReadWrite. And we'll also set it to, and, and note that that's octal of 644, which should be decent permissions for getting started. And then the error handling is, again, really simple. I try to do as much of the error handling up here so that I don't ha have to clear the terminal for the raw mode. Now that we have the file path on our hands, we can go ahead and uh, measure the file length. And we'll use that to initialize the terminal. I figure it's cheaper to make two file measures than to allocate a terminal and then reallocate it. Uh, once the terminal is initialized, we go ahead and do use our uh, new insert insert file at function. And, and if we failed to insert for some reason, we just go ahead and print and then do an exit. The difference here is that because now we're beyond the set terminal, so we're in raw mode, we do need to clean up all of the terminal issues before we exit. Go ahead and make a first pass at file saving here. However, we're gonna end up coming back here in just a minute because I realized pretty quickly that we need to actually truncate the file in order to actually make sure it's the right length. Now we're gonna move on to adding the control Q command. Uh, the design I went for is control X will do a save and exit and then control Q will give you a just plain quit, like basically dump your buffers up abort and don't touch the file. I realized in this round of testing that a yellow cursor on a cyan background was totally unlegible. For some reason, my terminal is okay. So fix that real quick. Then I go down and just make a note that we're not filtering out all of the possible ASCII characters that could come in. You know, if you do like a control of many of the characters, it'll actually just take off, I think it's like 64 or something from the character. Now we can go ahead and add the home home and page up, page down. Home and end are pretty easy, home super easy. We just take the, how many columns we are out and that's exactly how much we need to move back. The end key, on the other hand, we need to find out how long is the line, how far out are we and right, then we can subtract the two to find the other side. And so it's just slightly more involved. It's not too bad. So that's what is getting done here. Doing the page up and page down, we, we really did all the logic inside of the paging commands. So it's just calling them in, these, in the switch here. I did notice that I think it's on Windows. I, I didn't find this happening on Linux, but occasionally when the cursor would stop one character short of the new line. And so I kind of made almost a hack of like, look at the character you're sitting on. And if it was a, uh, not a new line, go ahead and move one more character. And that reliably fixed it on both Windows and Linux. Now we're back to our save function. I go ahead and just close the file and then reopen it again with a truncate flag turned on. And this seemed kind of the quickest, easiest way to get it put back to the state we want it in. Um, it shouldn't have any issues. So I just throw some quick asserts in there just, 
just in case. All right, and this is just the final round of testing, just making sure everything's saving, it's truncating correctly. So now we've got a text editor, it works, it saves, it um, quits and aborts. You can do page up, page down, home, and in arrow keys. It's general, you know, ASCII typing. There's no selections or anything like that, but I think we're gonna wrap up the project here. This is a nice stopping spot. Our project is less than a thousand lines of code and it shows pretty wide gamut of the things you can do in Odin and how succinct and nice the language is. If there's anything that you'd like to see me do next, leave a comment below and let me know what you thought of this design of the videos rather than the other ones where I just talk and type. I'm not sure which one's the best to do yet and so I'd love to hear what you think. Thank you for you guys watching and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.